today. No visual contact. She wasn't speaking. I didn't know how to help her. Could an experimental treatment be the breakthrough parents have been desperate for? The second day of treatment were the first words I had heard from my daughter. And I think anyone watching our show realizes that every child with autism presents differently and how you treat them and how they progress, it's different. So on our show, we're always thinking about new possibilities. And I want to introduce everyone to someone in our audience, Dr. Spencer Miller, because Dr. Miller, can you tell us a little bit about uh, a unique treatment that you offer that may have some, some hope? And, and certainly for a mom like Leah, who feels out of options, and it's called MERT. Right. Can you tell me what that is and, and how it works? Yes, so MERT is an emerging technology. It is experimental in some regards that actually tries to reprogram abnormal electrical signals in the brain. Um, we measure the electrical signals using a quantitative EEG, so it's a, a very simple, common use mm -hmm. practice in neurology, uh, where we put a cap on the head and look at where uh, abnormal signals are coming from. We then turn around with that data and use these electrical signals to, to send back in the brain and try to attempt to reattenuate or to modulate these brain signals. And the changes that we measure on these repeated EEGs uh, should correlate to behavioral changes. And the child looked very comfortable, didn't look like there was any pain associated with the procedure at all. Non-invasive, no medication involved with it, no pain. Um, sometimes you can feel a little bit of an electrical pulse, but it's a, a mild, mild tap on the, on and the forehead. How many treatments typically do you need to administer? And how soon do you see results, and what have the results been? Usually, within the first couple of days or weeks, you can start to see some benefits, some changes in their behavior. In general, we recommend about four weeks to six weeks of treatment. Um, the treatments are every day, 30 minutes or so. So they come to the clinic, get the, the stimulation, and uh, go about their daily business. So some children will have significant behavioral changes uh, very early. Some will take longer to get results. You know, this is, this is all new. And uh, like I said, it's, it's kind of evolving over time. In your experience, what kind of results are you getting in terms of the number of kids who are showing a, a benefit, a change in behavior? Mm -hmm. Do you have a number or a percentage? We, so I don't have a percentage uh, with me, but for, for the patients that I have seen um, uh, changes in behavior, it's typically just exactly what you're, you're, you're asking for. Language in general is one of those things that seems to really be commonly changed. The, the way that they in, interact with their environment, their ability to change from, you know, we have to go to a doctor's appointment at 7 today instead of 8, so we're going to have to change our schedule so there's not a meltdown in your car trying to go to a doctor's appointment. The other thing that we hear a lot of parents talk about is the presence, which, you know, is not really a medical term, but you know what I'm talking about. If your child is not there with you, even though they're sitting right in front of you, you're talking to them, um, there's just this absence. And so to be able to, to feel like your child is with you and listening or understanding you, so we see, we, we hear parents describe those type of behavioral improvements. And what potential side effects do you discuss with patients when you're talking about this procedure? So the one that is the most feared really is not that big of a deal. However, we have to discuss it. It's about a one in 150,000 chance of having a seizure. It's self-limited. A seizure is abnormal signals of the brain. We're reprogramming the brain, so you can imagine that that's a potential. But the seizure that would occur would be self-limited. You stop the, the stimulation, the seizure goes away. And I don't know of any cases where treatment has been administered and caused a seizure that then results in epilepsy or the epilepsy syndrome where you have continuous mm -hmm. seizures throughout your life. So I don't know of that to be the case. So, so the downside would be no benefit at all. All the time you would pour into something like this type of a treatment. Again, six weeks, uh, four to six weeks every day. You know, the, the downside would really be that, that there is no effect, which we do have children that have gone through four to six weeks and, and, and get no effect or no uh, change in their behavior. What's interesting to note, though, is that we do have research that currently shows that there are specific EEG changes in a uh, autistic brain. And it's a, you know, not a new tool by any means, but we're starting to understand how, by, by utilizing EEG to analyze autistic patients, how it can actually help us understand what's going on in the brain. Because we don't know what causes it, you know, we don't mm -hmm. really have a, a, a cure for it. None of these type of treatments that we're talking about really are FDA approved. Um, they're all off-label, you know, it's important to understand that. I mean, are you gathering data with, with your treatment of the patients you're we, doing? We keep a data set, you know, every single day that the patients come in, they the, the parents will describe symptoms. We can follow 
the CAR score, which is the Childhood uh, Autism Rating Scale, things like that. But one of the limitations, exactly what you're saying, the limitations is that we don't even have a unified way of measuring what autism is, right? It's a spectrum that doesn't really even have a, a cause that we know yet. And so that, that is one limitation. Of what course. we would have to probably do is focus more on behavior or symptoms that we're trying to modify and move from there into a clinical trial and then eventually evolve into, well, when your child has this uh, behavioral change, this is the protocol for it, or this is how we attenuate it. MERT is a little different in a sense also, even a, a variation to that in the sense that we're not really treating a brain disorder, we're treating what we see on the EEG. In other words, we're re-attenuating the abnormalities we see regardless of what the diagnosis is. And so it's a unique type of, of treatment approach. Coming up. As time passed, it became worse. It's like a, a jail that she was trapped into. No visual contact. She wasn't listening to her name. Her sister started speaking. She stopped speaking. Our family was in so much pain. Autism spectrum disorder is complicated and doesn't have a simple answer. But some say there is hope on the horizon with an electromagnetic therapy called MERT. Joining us now in our audience is Miriam, whose daughter went through this treatment. And I'm gonna go ahead and ask you, Miriam, a little bit about your, your daughter's autism. Of course. Well, when she was a baby, everything seemed perfect. You know, I was able to take her to the mall in a stroller. We were able to go, to, go everywhere. But as time passed, she was around a year and a half, everything went downhill, everything. Starting with her lack of connection to me as her mother or to anybody in the family. And one day, I remember specifically, I went up to her and said, Raquel, and she ignored me. And then I said, Raquel, and she wouldn't turn around and look at me. And then I started screaming her name right, right behind her ear, and she didn't even flinch. So I thought, she's deaf? It's the first thing I thought. So I took her to the doctor the next day, and the doctor took a metal pan and threw it on the ground, and she flipped. She got scared. And he goes, congratulations, your kid's not deaf. And I said, well, if she's not deaf, what is she? What do I do? Well, I don't know. So from there, she stopped making eye contact. Um, and I have twins, so it was very easy to compare at that age. One was doing so many things. You know, one started saying words. You know, Marcela, which is my, other, my twin, she wanted to be with me. She wanted to hug me, love me. Raquel couldn't stay on my touch. She was always gone in, like, in her own little world. And as time passed, it became worse. She, like, it was like a, a jail that she was trapped into. So no visual contact. She wasn't listening to her name. She wasn't following instructions. Her sister started speaking. She stopped speaking. There was nothing about her that was normal. So as time went on, things got worse because she stopped going out of the house. We couldn't take her out anymore. As so when she was a baby, she was able to go out. And when she was around three years old, I took her to a mall and she screamed so much and cried so much that a gentleman asked me if she needed an ambulance. So we're not talking about like a tantrum, we're talking about full on blown panic attacks. Um, it, it almost feel, felt like she was being attacked by the world. I, I didn't know how to help her. So I just didn't take her out anymore. And, and when I did want to just be a little stubborn and say, I want a normal day with my family and I want to take her out, she would bite herself because she was so frustrated. Also, you know, by now she's, what, four and a half years old, she's still wearing a diaper. Our family was in so much pain. And, and like many moms like Leah, like, we do so much. I have a list this long of everything I tried. And, and just, I would, she wasn't budging. You How know? old was she when she was formally diagnosed? She was formally diagnosed a year, uh, when she was a year and a half with severe autism. Okay. I was told uh, she would have to be put in a hospital eventually because, you know, she was, she was having a hard time. And so you, you were trying everything. Nothing was really helping. I want to ask you when, when you found out about this treatment we've been talking about called MERT. Well, okay, so she was four and a half, and I went to see a doctor in Atlanta, Georgia, and, and he said, listen, Miriam, you, you know, we've been working together for three years. You've done everything I've asked you to do. I can't lie to you. Your kid isn't getting better. Why don't you try this at the Brain Treatment Center? This thing's called MERT. He sort of explained to me what, what it was, and I just took the airplane. I just went. I, I didn't even, I wasn't even done with the conversation. I was already at the center. So I show up, and they tell me what, what they're going to do, they're going to do an EEG on my daughter and tell me, you know, get a glimpse of how her brain's functioning. And I have to say, that day alone, for me, it changed my life. Because you go to so many doctors with your autistic child, you don't have many, many answers. There's not much research out there, like you said, you pointed out. They were able to tell me who my daughter was. 
they were able to tell me about her, her tax, her anxiety, why she wasn't speaking. It's just, I got answers for the first time just about her brain. You know, not even about anything that had to do with her diagnosis. Here's your kid's brain. And it just felt so good to have that validation that, okay, I'm not crazy. This is not normal, you know? What happened after Mert, it just changed our lives. Miriam, what changes did you see in your daughter after Mert? At four and a half years old, I was gonna throw in the towel. I was tired, I was, I was frustrated, but we did the first day of treatment. I didn't see any change the first day. Um, the second day of treatment it was amazing. So the first thing we noticed was she was able to go in the car and not cry, which just so you have an idea, we hadn't taken her out of the house unless it was for medical appointments for over a year and a half. So we were in the car and we stayed an hour away from the center, we were able to take her and she didn't cry or hurt herself or scream. And I remember holding my breath. I'm like, oh my God, I'm looking at my husband. He's like, don't talk, don't talk, just in case you startle her. <laughs> like, it was like, oh my God, is this really happening? So when we, we get there, my child walks up to, to the stairs. She goes, sits in the little chair she sat the day before and she grabbed this, uh, the coil that they use and she put it on her head. She liked it. And she was able to stand that whole therapy session with other kids screaming or uh, other parents walking around, phone calls, things that before she wasn't able to stand. So I, I said, okay, I'm staying. I'm staying no matter what, because it, to me, it was the first time my daughter was comfortable in her skin in many, many years. So that day we went back to where we were staying and she came up to me. I was in the kitchen with my husband and she came up to me with a little cup and she said to me, dame mas jugo, give me more juice. And those were the first words I had ever heard from my daughters. Miriam. I just need to say really quickly, you may be nervous. I'm very nervous. But you just gave such a wonderful representation of what your daughter has had to go through and what you, you. as a mother have gone through. Thank you for that. Thank and you. I, I want to just take a moment because th those were her first words. First words. And, and in my mind's eye, those aren't your first words unless you've been wanting to talk. Yes. And yes. you know what yes. you want to say, but you cannot say it. She knew the words. It. Yes, you've been and, and that's that. important for people watching. And, and I mean, for you as a mother, wh where then did she go after that point forward? So a week later, another thing changed my life, right? So this is, this is life altering for me. A week later, my daughter finds out I'm her mother. Just like you're hearing it. She comes up to me and she says, "Upa," like that's our word for up. Right? So I carry her and I'm like, oh my God, she's letting, me, she's letting me touch her. And my daughter grabs my shoulders and she parts me like this and she shakes and she goes, <gasps> and then she hugs me. And then she parts my shoulders once again and she goes, <gasps> and then she kisses me. And I remember this day because it was the happiest day of my whole life. And my aunt said, oh my God, it looks like she's just getting to know you. For the first time, like, she's just getting to know me. She was, she's born today. She knows I'm her mother today. And from that day on, she likes my heels. She likes, to, <laughs> she likes my dresses. She likes my makeup. Um, she's just a mama's girl now. As to before, she had no idea. But let me say something else. She, she wasn't. She wasn't born that day. She was born when she was born. All you're right, you're through right. the process, she knew she was loved, and so I I, so. I, I, I want to say that to any parent out there who is in a situation that you were in, there's hope, right? And, and your story attests to that. And this is an anecdote. Look, in medicine, we always say. Anecdotes are anecdotes, so anecdotes are not proof, but we actually even have some video of Raquel before and after her treatment. Y la cabeza, abre la cabeza. Enséñame la cabeza. ¿Dónde está? A ver, a ver, a ver, a ver, ¿dónde está? ¿Dónde está la cabeza? Ah, ¿dónde está? ¿Dónde está? Ven, di, Marcelita, Marcelita. Marcelita. Papá, te amo. Papá, te amo. And, I mean, Miriam, it's like a miracle. I mean, it, it me, really it is. I get chills seeing that. Does she just continue to get better? Or? She did. She did. So after we were almost done with the month, 
I told my husband, I want to go to Disney. He goes, you crazy? We, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we did the mall. You're happy. She's happy in the mall. We did the park. She's happy in the park. I said, I want to go to Disney. I need to go to Disney. Like, I need to know that my daughter can be in the happiest place ever and with all the sensory information that she couldn't stand before because she couldn't handle anything. And so we went to Disney. And she, she rode the carousel and she enjoyed it. And her family felt whole for the first time. And, and she has gotten so much better because now she's 11, all right? And so my daughter goes to a regular school. She's above her class in math. She made her first friend this year. Um, to me, that is like, it's a miracle on its own, you know? She can go anywhere with us. You know, she loves airplanes. If, you, if I'm leaving, she's like, I'm coming with you, right? You know, um, she's part of her family. And yes, you know, my daughter is autistic. She'll always be autistic, but I am proud of that. I am, my dream is her independence and her be able to say, this is who I am. And, and, um, and I'll be so proud that they should, she can do that. Her speech still needs catching up to, you know? She's 11, she started her first words at four and a half, but she can definitely do so much more that now than she did before. She's able to, to, like, let's say I went on a trip that same day I decided to leave and she was like, wait, you're leaving all of a sudden, is everything okay? For her to be able to understand these things, like, I never thought possible. As you told your story, Miriam, about Raquel, what was amazing for me is you couldn't see the people behind you, but every single person behind you was transfixed with the story that you were telling because it was the story of a mother who was meeting her daughter for the first time, and that's powerful stuff. And so there's hope, there's always hope. Ma'am, give Raquel a huge hug from all of us here at The Doctors. Thank you. And thank you again for sharing your story. And we're gonna have more information on our website uh, in terms of MERT therapy. We're also gonna have some information about therapies out there, behavioral therapies that have shown some benefit um, for children on the autism spectrum disorder. I, I think this is such an important topic, one we will continue to discuss. That's today.